Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through question number 9, part G, from exercise 6F from the International A-Level Pure Mathematics P3 um, at Excel book. And this is a textbook, and this is a question about differentiating the inverse uh, trig functions. So they asked us to differentiate y equals arc sine of x over x minus 1 with respect to x. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to assume we don't know what the differential of arc sine of x is. And so I'm going to start off as if we didn't know that. All right. So first of all, um, I'm going to just let's, let's start off this without, um, you know, just right from the beginning. So we say, OK, let me say that y equals if arc sine Let's say y equals arc sine. Now, arc sine is another way of writing inverse sine. Some of you are probably more familiar with writing inverse sine. So I'll write that for now just for you to have something that you're familiar with. So arc sine is the same thing exactly as saying inverse sine of. Okay, so, the, so I'm going to call this y equals inverse sine of x over x minus 1. Now, I don't know what the inverse sine of a function is. The differential of the inverse sine of a function is. Just say we don't know the result for that. So let's do this right from the beginning as if we had no idea what it's going to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, all right, I don't know how to differentiate inverse sine x. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and make x a subject to the formula and then see what I can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this with um, you know, the angle. Like, for example, if I have the inverse sine of, an, um, of, for example, of x equals y. The inverse, let me call it inverse angle of, let's say, x equals y, something like that. Okay, then I can rewrite this as um, y equals, or sorry, x equals sine of y. I can rewrite it as x equals the sine of y. Okay, if the inverse sine of x equals y, that means x equals the sine of y. Okay, because this is the, the ratio, and this is the angle. So if I want to find what the the ratio is it's going to be equal to the sine of the angle. Okay, so I can just rewrite this as um, x over x minus 1 equals the sine of y. So I'm just rewriting this as making this x over x minus 1 the subject. Now what I want to do is I want to rewrite this so I can have x as a subject and then I'm going to try and, try and differentiate what it becomes. So first I'm going to cross multiply. So I have x equals sine y well, x, it's better to write it this way, actually. x minus 1 times sine y. Then I'm going to expand that bracket. So x equals x sine y minus sine y. And then I'm going to bring the x's together on one side um, so that I can then express x as a subject. So what I'm going to do is, to make it look neater, I'll bring the x's on this side. That way you'll have a, a positive sine y equals x sine y minus x. I can take x out as common. So sine y equals x times sine y minus 1. And then I can make x a subject. I can say x is equal to sine of y over sine y minus 1. Okay, so now I've made x a subject of the formula. All right, so once I've made x a subject of the formula, let me just make a bit of space here. Um, then what I can do is, I can then find the, try to find the x dy. So my next objective is to find the x dy. So x equals sine y over sine y minus 1. Now here we have a quotient. So I'm going to use the quotient rule to try to differentiate this. So I'm just going to use the space up here to write down my u and my v's and stuff like that. So I know that u is equal to, let me get rid of this as well. So u is equal to sine y, the numerator. And v is equal to sine my y minus 1, the denominator. So u dash, the differential of sine y, is cosine y. And v dash, the differential of sine y minus 1, is also just cosine y. So now I'm going to multiply these two. So I'll say dx dy is equal to the product of these two, which is cosine y times sine of y minus 1, minus these two multiplied, which is sine y times cosine y sine y times cosine y, divided by v squared, which is sine y minus 1 all squared. Okay, 
that's dy dx dy. Now I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to simplify this by expanding that bracket. So I'll have sine y times cosine y minus cosine y minus sine y times cosine y. Okay, so it's starting to some things are going to cancel out now. As you can see, sine y, cosine y, minus sine y, cosine y cancel out. So I'm left with dx dy, dx dy, still it's dx dy, equals minus cosine y over sine y minus 1, all squared. Okay, that's dx dy. What I need to find is dy dx. So dy dx is the inver or the reciprocal, sorry, of this which is sine of y minus 1 squared um, over minus cosine y. Let's put the minus out here, cosine of y. Okay, now, I want to have dy dx in terms of x and not in terms of y. Okay, I need it in terms of x. So I've got to try to use what I've written down here, okay, to replace the y's and the x's, the sine y's and the x's and all that. So I know that, as I wrote over there, sine y is equal to x over x minus 1. So I can see, I'm going to take this part and write it separately here so that I can, uh, you know, I don't have to keep writing this fraction down. I can say that sine y minus 1 squared is going to be x over x minus 1 minus 1 all squared. So this is going to be as one fraction. It's like this is 1 over 1. So this is going to stay as x over minus 1. And this is going to be, we'll have to multiply by x minus 1. So it's going to be minus x minus 1, making this as one fraction. But then that's squared because this is sine y minus 1 squared. So that's going to be x minus x and plus 1. x minus x, which is 0, plus 1. So you'll have 1 over x minus 1 squared. Because if you square the 1, it's going to give you 1. So this is what sine y minus 1 is going to be. So I can say dy dx is equal to, instead of sine y minus 1, I can have this as 1 over x minus 1 squared. Now I can look at cosine y. How am I going to write cosine y in terms of x? Well, I know that sine y is equal to x over x minus 1. To, I think the easiest way to deal with this is to think of this as a, an angle. This is the angle y, the sine of y. So I'll make a right angle triangle. I can think of this as in terms of so katoa. I can say the sine of y is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so there I can now say that this side must be the the um, the diff the square root of x minus one squared minus x squared. Okay, so we're going to have the square root of x minus one squared minus x squared by Pythagoras. So this is going to equal. Okay, so this is going to be, this is just this side here. This is going to be the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus x squared. The x squareds cancel out, you're left with 1 minus 2x. So this is going to be the square root of 1 minus 2x. Okay, at first sight this looks like a contradiction because you've got a hypotenuse which is smaller than the, uh, the opposite. But x can also be a negative value. Alright, so therefore in that case this would be bigger than that. So don't worry too much about you know whether this looks impossible in terms of actual numbers. We're dealing with the, the trig functions here and there could be different quadrants and different values. So don't worry too much about that too, for now. But this gives us the right expression for the adjacent side. So we can say now that the cosine of y, the cosine of y is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. So I can replace the cosine y with the square root of 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. So now if I just simplify this, this is like a fraction divided by a fraction. So you have minus 1 over x minus 1 all squared. Now if I divide by a fraction, I multiply by its reciprocal. So that's going to be x minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x. So you're left with dy dx is equal to minus... Now this cancels with this, so you're left with one of the bracket, one of the x minus ones cancel. So on the top you're left with just one over, and then on the bottom you're left with x minus one times the square root of one minus two x. And there we have this is the actual answer. If you look at the back of the book, this will be the answer.
Okay, so it's a bit of a palaver, this question. I doubt you'll get something as complicated like this, but just this is how you deal with such questions. If you didn't know the result for the arc sine of something, you didn't know the differential of it. Okay, so um, I'm guessing that, um, you know, they would expect you to use the, the you know, the, the result for it. So I'm going to show you how to do it in that way also um, on the next page. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the same question um, as if we already knew the result that if y equals arc sine of x, then dy dx equals uh, 1 over the square root of uh, 1 minus x squared. That's the, that's the result that if you knew it, that this is what happens when you differentiate arc sine of something, you get this, then you could use the chain rule directly. So you can say, let y equals arc sine, which means inverse sine as we discussed before, of x over x minus 1. Now, if we use this result with the chain rule, it's like you have a function inside the function. So first of all, you differentiate the main function. The main function is arc sine of something. And that be when you differentiate the main function here, this, it, gets, it gets in this form. So you get 1 over the square root of 1 minus. Now, this x represents what's evident inside the function. This x represents whatever's there. So what is there? It's x over x minus 1. And that has to be squared. So that's differentiating the main function. Then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So you've got to multiply by the differential of x over x minus 1. Now, if you want to multiply by that, you have a quotient. So you've got to use the quotient rule. So you can say u is equal to x and v is equal to x minus 1. So u dash is equal to 1 and v dash is also equal to 1. So you're going to multiply these together. That gives you x minus 1 minus you multiply these together. That gives you x over x squared, v squared, sorry, which is x minus 1 all squared. So you're going to have x minus x. So you get basically get this in here. You're going to have minus 1 over x minus 1 squared okay so that will give you dy dx in terms of x so we have to now simply just simplify this now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this part here and i'm going to write it as one fraction so i have one minus x squared over x minus one all squared so i'm just taking this part here and just dealing with it separately so that i don't have a big mess over there so i'll just deal with that over here first and then we can uh, go back this is not straight, is it? It's still not straight, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to make this into one whole fraction. So this will be x minus 1 squared, and that will become x minus 1 squared minus x squared, all under the square root. Okay, so let me just continue down there. That gives me the square root of, this gives me on top, x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus x squared over x. I'll leave this as x minus 1 squared for now. So this is going to give me x squared minus x squared, which t cancels out. So I'm left with 1 minus 2x over x minus 1 all squared. So basically that gives me the square root of 1 minus 2x over x minus 1. Because I square root, square, to find the square root of x minus 1 squared gives me x minus 1. So what I can do is now I can replace all of this. I can replace all of this okay, with what I've got down there, uh, which is... Um, yeah, 1 minus 2x of x minus 1. So you have dy dx is equal to 1 over, now this becomes, remember, um, this part of it became exactly that what's down, down there. So it's 1 over um, the square root of 1 minus 2x divided by x minus 1. And on this side I've got, I've got multiplied by minus 1 over x minus 1 squared. Now this is like a reciprocal. 1 over something is a reciprocal. So I, ha I can write this as x minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x times minus 1 over x minus 1 squared. And this is my dy dx. So just simplifying it finally, we we'll see that the x minus 1 cancels with the x minus 1 here. So I'm left with dy dx equals minus 1 over and I've got, again, the same thing, x minus 1 times the square root of 1 minus 2x. And that is the answer to the question using the chain rule. 
okay using the chain rule using the result as if we knew what this is okay so you can do it that way but if you didn't know that result you can still do it by making as i did here x the subject and then finding dx dy by using the quotient rule and then turning into dy dx and then replacing the sine y with the things in terms of x and the cosine y by using this so there's uh, you know, this is maybe a bit more complicated way, but it's if you didn't know the result, and this is the way you do it if you do know the result for y equals arc sine x, and using the chain rule, kind of similar in a way because you had to resort to the quotient rule, um, kind of similar, okay, but this is how you do it in both types of ways, whichever one you prefer. So um, I hope that was clear. I know it's, you won't, I don't doubt you'll get a question as complicated like this in the exam, but you never know. So it's good to be prepared for it. So thank you for watching. Other questions from uh, this topic of uh, differentiation, chapter six, will be found in this uh, link over here from the P3 book. Um, and other, um, you know, maybe past paper questions, okay, from P3, you can find on the, the uh, what's it called, the card at the top of the page. Thank you for watching. I hope everything was clear and I see you again soon.